Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to the European Study Talk. Uh, we are already on the halfway of our series um, webinars. Uh, we are bringing a lot of uh, university in Europe for our uh, Taiwanese audience. And tonight, we are bringing uh, one public research university in Germany, which is uh, University of Freiburg. And we are very pressured <clears throat> to invite the faculty uh, ma manager of engineering, Mr. Uh, Renner. Renner will introduce the school program and also probably focus on the program uh, in engineering tonight and also give us some tips uh, regarding the application to uh, the school. Let's welcome him, Renner. Jay, thank you very much for the uh, introduction. And um, I think, first of all, I will share my screen. So yes, that besides watching me talk, it's better to have some more information on the slides. In tonight's seminar, <clears throat> I would like to introduce the University of uh, Freiburg to you in Germany. Um, the talk is divided in three parts. In the first part, I would like to introduce the university itself. In the second part, I would like to focus a little bit more onto our faculty of engineering. And in the third part, I will give you some information about the city of uh, Freiburg. Uh, as Jay already told you, I'm a faculty manager of the faculty of engineering. My name is uh, Rainer Biersiepen. This is not the first time I'm participating in the European Education Fair in Taiwan. I already participated in 2018 and 2019 in presence, and this is the first time um, with the online seminar. Starting with the first part, I uh, give you some information about the University of Freiburg. Freiburg is a public university and a comprehensive university covering a very broad spectrum of uh, disciplines. It's a traditional university, quite an old uh, university. It was founded more than 560 years ago in 1457. It's not the oldest university in Germany, but one of the oldest universities in Germany. The university is divided, um, all the fields are divided in uh, 11 faculties, starting with very traditional one, the theology, then the second one is law. Uh, third one is economic and behavioral sciences covering economics and uh, uh, psychology, for example, also sports sciences. The fourth one is also traditional one, medicine, um, and also covering dentistry. The fifth one is philology, um, covering a lot of languages, especially uh, European languages, uh, but also Eastern European languages and also um, Asian languages, Chinese, you can study Chinese sciences and Chinese language at our university. Um, the sixth uh, faculty is the faculty of philosophy covering um, the field of philosophy, but also, for example, um, arts, science or archaeology and other subjects. Then we are coming to the natural sciences with mathematics and also physics um, included in uh, one faculty. The next one is chemistry, pharmacy, and uh, geosciences. Um, for example, crystalline uh, materials uh, covered in this uh, faculty. The ninth faculty is biology um, with uh, different subjects. Uh, the tenth one is a specialty of uh, our university, forestry and environmental sciences, there are only very few universities in Germany where you actually can study <coughs> forestry sciences. And the 11th faculty is the faculty of engineering, um, the faculty where I belong to covering uh, engineering disciplines and uh, computer science. And I will tell you a little bit uh, about this uh, later on. 
Altogether, there are about uh, 320 or 300, actually 319 undergraduate and graduate level uh, programs. The bachelor programs generally la takes uh, three years and the master programs two years, uh, two years programs. Beside the degree bachelor and master, the university also covers as a specialty all of Germany, um, the state examination degree and the state examination degree is for law, medicine, uh, dentistry and um, pharmacy, uh, special speciality. And uh, these fields of studies are not divided into uh, undergraduate and graduate studies, but it's uh, all these programs are long term programs uh, also uh, offered in German uh, language and um, there are specific regulations if you want to study one of these uh, programs uh, because there's a specific uh, procedure and since also in Germany, um, especially on medicine <clears throat> and pharmacy, there's a high demand um, for study places uh, also for German students it's not very it's not very easy to enter one of these programs in medicine I think I know there are it's, it's a quota of about five percent international students allowed and not more than five uh, percent the uh, <clears throat> academic year is divided in two uh, semesters and two terms, uh, the winter semester from 1st of October until March and the summer term, April until uh, September. The actual uh, teaching or um, uh, where, where, where the teaching happens is from middle of October until middle of uh, February and middle of April until uh, end of uh, July. Uh, the University of Freiburg also is a, quite an international university. Um, uh, there are about 4,000 international students of altogether 24,000 students. This is 16% uh, of these 4,000 students, 1,500 are coming from Asia. And I just uh, yesterday had a look at the, the database and the database said uh, 40, Students are actually coming um, from Taiwan. This is a figure from the academic year 2020-21. Comparison, um, the number of students coming from the uh, People's Republic of China, it's about tenfold, about 400 students um, uh, from uh, the other, from uh, Chinese, uh, from China. Uh, the university maintains a lot of international partnerships and exchange programs with a, a very huge number of institutions worldwide. This can be on the university level, but also on the faculty level. Um, I also had a look at the database from Taiwan. It's uh, the National Taiwan University as an exchange or inter, uh, international partner. And I'm also aware of um, another uh, partnership um, uh, which somebody introduced to me in Kaohsiung, um, but I didn't find this specific partnership on the database um, from the university, but there are some connections, uh, especially on the research um, base. Uh, the university is maintaining uh, very close links to partnering universities in uh, our region, in France and also in Switzerland, altogether five universities. Uh, which uh, maintains very close links, and um, this is called UCOR, this connection, this collaboration, and this is a very big advantage for you if you are interested in a sp very specific subject that is not offered at the University of Freiburg, but offered, for example, at the University in Basel or Strasbourg in France, then you can uh, take these classes in, in the other universities. The university facilitates the commuting to the other universities. So it's um, a big advantage for you to broaden your spectrum in uh, the subject in the field you want to study. And the University of Freiburg also um, maintains quite a big spe broad spectrum in uh, English taught uh, master programs. 
I will show you on the next slide. Altogether, there are 28 English taught degree programs, especially in the, on the graduate level. Only one program is offered on the undergraduate level, the Bachelor of Arts program in Liberal Arts and Sciences. And uh, this is uh, not uh, offered uh, in a three-year program, but it's a four-year program. This is a very specific program. And, uh, and on the master's level, like the, the, the graduate level, uh, programs are offered in um, different disciplines, especially in philology, like American and English studies, also modern China studies, in behavioral uh, sciences, like social sciences and economics. This is quite a popular program for international students, and so it's offered in a, totally in English language. Uh, and in uh, the natural sciences and engineering area, we do have programs, for example, in renewable energy engineering and management. This is a program offered by my own faculty together with the Faculty of Environmental Sciences and Applied Physics, Physics, Neuroscience, um, also a combined program from Biology, Medicine and Faculty of Engineering, Environmental Governance Sciences, Forest Sciences, Geology, and uh, I will then go a little bit into detail later on into the master programs offered by my own faculty. University of Freiburg also is a strong research university. I only showed you before on the slide like the international collaborations on, on the uh, teaching side, but also, of course, on the research side, uh, our our researchers are competing um, internationally with the best researcher in their uh, field. And uh, for that, uh, University of Freiburg um, was host for a lot of uh, Nobel Prize laureates, as you can see here, the last one in 2008, Harald Zuhausen. I only want to mention one or two of them to you, like Hermann Staudinger who uh, was awarded the Nobel Prize for Chemistry in 1953. He's basically the father for, for um, chemistry for uh, polymer substances. So basically he did all the fundamental research uh, on plastics that's all around us and uh, the materials that are used now in a very variety of uh, application areas. Uh, Georges Köhler, the second last one on this list, uh, was awarded the Nobel Prize for his fundamental research on monoclonal antibodies. And Harald Zuhausen, the last one, was awarded the Nobel Prize for his uh, research on human papilloma viruses uh, causing um, cervix cancer. And uh, if you look a little bit closer at the university research, for example, uh, the university does very well. Uh, it maintains research centers in specific uh, fields of research. Um, through the Excellence Initiative, you might be aware of, uh, the University of Freiburg was funding, uh, was, was got money for, from, uh, for supporting the research in two research clubs called TIPS, like uh, the Center of Integrated Biological Signaling Studies, and the other one is Live mats, um, living materials, uh, where researchers from different disciplines are working or collaborating together for this specific target. And uh, like uh, other very well known universities, the University of Freiburg maintains the Freiburg Institute of Advanced Studies, where internal and external fellows <clears throat> are um, working um, in collaboration together. But not only in research, the university is very successful, but also in uh, teaching. Um, the university was funded uh, a project uh, coming from third party money, uh, Windows for Higher Education, and also in continuing education and projects as the Open University was um, funded and supported. And sometimes uh, people like to know what's the standing of a specific university. And I only want to mention one ranking, um, it's the Times Higher Education ranking and um, the figures are from 2021. Um, when you um, compare Freiburg with other universities in Germany, 
Freiburg has um, standing number seven um, and worldwide number 83. But I don't want to focus on uh, rankings, but give you some more detailed information um, about the university, ingredients about the university. Now, in the second part of my talk, I would like to focus a little bit more on my own faculty, the Faculty of Engineering. This Faculty of Engineering is not as old as the whole university. It's only 25 years or now 26 years of existence. So last year we uh, should have celebrated the 25th anniversary, but due to Corona, uh, it was skipped. And uh, I don't know if we have a big celebration later on uh, named uh, 25 plus two or 25 plus three, because uh, now Corona is still uh, uh, present also in Germany. So uh, not very many big um, parties uh, can be done in, at the university. The Faculty of Engineering um, has three large departments. Uh, the first one is the Department of Computer Science. The second one, the Department of Microsystems Engineering. And the last one is the Department of Sustainable Systems Engineering. And I listed the uh, main research foci or scientific foci um, of these three departments, starting from biomedical microsystems, uh, cyber physical systems in uh, computer science, then we have information systems for life science, intelligent integrated microsystems, we had uh, also funded and supported uh, research areas uh, in uh, this field, intelligent materials, bio-inspired systems. Um, this is uh, the main focus also covered by this um, research cluster, LibMeds, artificial and, and intelligent machine learning, one of the strongest uh, departments in this area are located in, uh, in Germany, are located in Freiburg at the University of Freiburg. A lot of publications are uh, done in this area. Sustainable materials and energy systems, also energy, yeah, how you can harvest energy from the environment uh, to support small scale systems. Networks and resilience is a specific feature of uh, the third department of sustainable systems engineering. And we cover uh, broad spectrum and neural technology and robotics. This was one of the major tasks of one of the uh, brain links brain tools. This uh, was also a research cluster funded in the um, last period of the Excellency Initiative. And last but not least, photonics. In the academic year 2020, 2021, um, 2,400 students were enrolled in different programs at the Faculty of Engineering. 31% of them were international students coming from a broad spectrum of uh, countries. Um, in 2020, we roughly had about uh, 300 uh, graduates uh, were awarding 90 PhDs. Uh, degrees and um, all together we have about um, so that you can get a get a, a feeling for the size of the faculty of engineering about 450 scientific staff um, is working at the faculty these are the engineering degree programs starting with computer science a bachelor program uh, taught in uh, German language and the Master of Science program in computer science taught in English language. The microsystems engineering, it's about the same bachelor program in German and master's program in microsystems engineering in taught in English. Uh, there's another master program, microsystem technique. Uh, this is uh, basically meant for our own um, domestic students who have already studied microsystem, microsystems, the specific field of uh, microsystem technique, microsystem engineering, whereas uh, the program in microsystems engineering is not only open for international students, but also come, students coming from a related uh, field and not a different uh, engineering field, for example. Then we have a, a program or we have programs in embedded systems engineering combining uh, uh, if you uh, talk about uh, hardware and software, 
uh, together, like uh, combining microsystems engineering and computer science. There's a bachelor program and also a master program taught in English language. And the uh, programs in sustainable systems engineering, um, we have now the first graduates in the bachelor's programs and several years of existence of the English taught um, master program. And see the figure is wrong, SSE should be behind the master program, the abbreviation SSE, not behind the uh, bachelor program. I'm sorry about that. These are some uh, admissions uh, regulations. Um, as I said before, in computer science, uh, you should have a first degree in computer science or systems engineering, so a very closely related field. In uh, uh, microsystems engineering, MSE, you should have a background in electrical engineering or microelectronics, for example, also mechatronics. In um, embedded systems engineering, uh, the uh, staff requires, uh, or the, the admission uh, requires a first degree in electronics engineering or systems engineering or computer science. And the spectrum is a little bit broader in sustainable systems engineering, where you can have a first degree in mechanical, electrical, electron engineering, or electronics, or even process engineering. As I said before, the language of instruction is pure English, so you don't need to have any German language skills to follow these programs. Um, but I uh, listed the language requirements. They are all the same for all the programs. Um, it's uh, the level C1 on the European uh, language um, uh, certificates level, and uh, this means uh, you should have at least uh, TOEFL examination. Um, um, the, the, when, when, when you pass a TOEFL test, you should uh, have the, the score 95, or if you pass an IELTS test, um, then the band 7.0. And this is um, the, uh, these are the language requirements for all the four programs. Um, the other master programs at the university, they can have other language requirements and you always, uh, when you are interested in one of the other programs, should visit the website of the university and follow the links to the detailed information for the single program. As a general rule, when you apply for the master programs, you normally don't apply directly at the university level, but you have to apply at the faculty level or the institution which is offering uh, the program. But uh, there's always online um, application possible. I listed uh, the application deadlines, the programs in embedded systems engineering, computer science, start two times a year in winter term and also summer term and the application deadline for uh, summer term is either 15th or it's only 15th of December. When you want to apply for the winter term the deadline varies a little bit it's either 15th of May or 31st of May. In the beginning, I said all the master programs are two-year programs and this is also true for uh, these four programs. You have to consider a study fee uh, for all when you are international students at the University of Freiburg or um, when you want to enroll of one of the universities, public universities in the state of Baden-Württemberg. Uh, we have to charge 1,500 euro per term, so 3,000 euro for a year, these are the tuition fees. So for the whole program, you have to consider 6,000 euro uh, study fees. Uh, I will, I'm always uh, asked about the um, cost of living um, in Freiburg. It varies a little bit, but Freiburg is very attractive. So you have to calculate uh, with about roughly 900, month, uh, 900 euro per month. And this is uh, for housing, uh, food, transportation, health insurance, uh, and also study materials. If you have problems in the beginning, um, when you are, come from your own environment, um, there are, are some help, um, either by the study coordinators, whom you might contact all the time, 
or if you have uh, problems in following uh, lectures, there are always lecture recordings um, from the same year or from the last year. So if you uh, need to follow the uh, the lectures um, after the like the present um, lecture, you there are always possibility that you, you can have a look at lecture recordings, and this will help you to understand um, the subject. Now, in the last part of my talk, I would like to um, introduce the city of Freiburg to you and the area. Freiburg is located in the southwestern part of uh, Germany, very close to uh, France and Switzerland, about 30 kilometers far away from France and about 50 kilometers away from uh, Switzerland. The main airport, the main international airport in Germany is located in Frankfurt, and it's a very convenient only two hours train ride uh, to Freiburg, so it's very easy to, um, to uh, go to Freiburg, and there's a, a high-speed train every hour um, from Frankfurt Airport to uh, Freiburg. Freiburg is a medium-sized city in uh, Germany. It's not a large city. It's the capital of Black Forest with 2,000 uh, 225,000 inhabitants. It's a well, it's always called a green city. This also has to do with uh, not only the greenery and the location at the border of the Black Forest, but also in engineering terms, speaking in engineering terms, um, we have a, a large um, research institute outside the university covering uh, photovoltaics, uh, the Fraunhofer Institute for uh, Solar Energy Engineering. And um, this is one of the reasons why Freiburg is uh, called Green City. Freiburg uh, is quite old. Uh, you find the city center medieval charm on every corner. Last year, the city was celebrating its 900th um, anniversary. And it's a city of traditions. Um, as all all over the world, you have a nice market on the central place close to the cathedral. Um, this looks very familiar to all over, to, to people from all over the world. And uh, besides studying, um, there are plenty of distractions like socializing with friends um, or watching a soccer uh, game. Um, from the SD Freiburg. SD Freiburg is um, in the Premier League uh, of soccer in uh, Germany, and also the new stadium is located uh, as a neighboring our faculty of engineering. Um, hot springs, you can enjoy, especially during winter times, hot springs um, in Freiburg or in the um, environment of Freiburg. Um, or you can do sports by yourself, like skiing during winter time, or cycling, or running, or enjoying other outside uh, sport activities. So there are a lot of reasons for studying in Freiburg, and I hope during uh, my talk I could uh, introduce you to some of the specific figures of our university, of the city of Freiburg, and my own uh, my own faculty of engineering. And if you need want to have some more detailed information, feel free to have a look at the website me-freiburg.de, uh, or uh, if you want to write some emails, here are um, I listed two contact addresses. Um, the one is like for general information um, in the uh, international admissions uh, department, international ad service .uni and uh, study coordination, studium coordination in German. This is specific for the uh, information about the uh, engineering uh, master programs at our uh, faculty, or not, not only the master programs, the study programs at the Faculty of Engineering, Studienkoordination at uh, tf.uni-freiburg.de. So thank you very much for your attention. All right. Thank you, Renner.
uh, to bring us um, the outlook of the University of um, Frankfurt and also some city look of the Frankfurt as well. Now let's welcome uh, all the questions from our audience. Uh, please feel free to leave your message in Q&A part. Uh -huh. I believe Renner will try to uh, answer you uh, as many of them as possible. First of all, uh, uh, as you mentioned, the application, would you like to talk about is any like preferred qualification like Fred would like to see from the applicants? Mm -hmm. Okay. So as I said, uh, you should um, have a first degree in the same or related uh, field for the program you are applying to. Uh, normally in Germany, it's um, not easy to change the subject completely because the programs build up upon each other. So you need to have knowledge from your first degree to be able to follow the classes and the subjects taught in the uh, graduate degree. Therefore, um, sometimes I got questions. I have a first degree in languages and now I would like to study economics. Um, it's attractive at your university and I always have to say, no, unfortunately, this will not be possible because you have to stick more closely to your own subject. This is uh, the structure, gen general structure about the programs as I think in whole Germany, there are maybe you can you can find um, examples where you can change the subject completely, but I'm not really aware of at least not at our university. Sure. And uh, in general, when um, the school or each uh, faculty is reviewing applicants' profile, which part of the low side material or documents is important, like more important than others? The most important document is the transcript of records. So since we are not doing interviews, we have to judge the written material. And the most important part is the transcript of records. And we have a lot of knowledge and experience in uh, judging the degrees and where the applicants come from. We get applications from all over the world, from very uh, well-known universities, from not well-known universities. And so we look at every single application and try to find out what's the standing of uh, the applicant, because we want to make sure that uh, the one we uh, accept uh, is able, basically able to follow the classes. Mm -hmm. Like on the math master's level, we, we don't want to uh, have students dropping out in a large number. They always one or two who uh, cannot follow the classes, but on a general base, uh, we want to make sure uh, that there is not a high dropout number. If, it, if we would have a high dropout number, we would, wouldn't do our job very well. So it's, um, uh, and therefore we need a lot of experience. We have experienced staff to judge all these applications. Uh, sometimes there's always uh, some programs require also um, a letter of, uh, of intent, uh, we don't look at this letter so much. For most of our programs, uh, the transcript of record is our most uh, prominent um, information sheet. I see, which means the basic knowledge and then background is like fundamental yeah. to enter. Yeah. Uh, we, we try to find out um, the, where the university, where the students come from, what's the standing of uh, the university? Can, can we make sure that the basic knowledge is, uh, is um, it's the same as uh, at our universities? So like in engineering disciplines, you uh, need to have a lot of skills in physics and also mathematics. Um, are the skills about the same as for our own students because then they build up upon each other and we, as I said before, we want to make sure that uh, people can follow the classes on a higher level, in the graduate level. Like on top of that, uh, is there like something like a uh, preparatory program, like in either uh -oh. BA or for bachelor or master program? For the bachelor program, we have preparatory courses. 
you have to keep in mind that for the bachelor programs, you the first thing is that you have to have a, a solid knowledge in German language. It's also the level C1 in German language knowledge, and all the bachelor programs are taught in uh, German language. And uh, for the bachelor students uh, coming from high school, we have uh, preparatory courses introducing um, the students in, the, in some of the subjects. But on the master's level, uh, normally we don't have these kind of preparatory uh, courses. They are either in integrated in some of the programs like in um, microsystems engineering. This is a program meant for uh, applicants from uh, different engineering areas. And so they uh, need to get some skills in, in uh, microsystems engineering. So we have mandatory uh, courses integrated in these master programs. And the, uh, the other master program, microsystem technique meant for our own graduates from the bachelor's programs, they don't need to take these courses. So it's uh, kind of integrated. And uh, there's always hint from the study coordinators if uh, they have the feeling um, that there is a missing link, um, they will give you some uh, information uh, in which book, in which uh, scientific book you should have a look by yourself and um, fill, maybe fill the gap of your knowledge. So in, in University of Freiburg, th does the school adapt on the Delta exam? The, which exam? The Delta exam? Yep. I'm not really aware of this term, so I'm. Uh, it, it is a high school exam, or it's uh, what what kind of exam? Delta exam. I'm normally yes. we accept um, exams uh, which are similar to our own high school uh, certificates, and if this is similar and accepted in all of Germany, of course, uh, the University of Freiburg will also accept uh, these exams. I think it's a it's a very like specific very specific okay. like if if I, I believe it's not like probably uh mm -hmm. in, in university of Freiburg. maybe the one uh who was asking the question should contact uh, the email address international at service only minus freiburg.de and uh, they will answer perfectly this question all right. Either you might be applying other faculty or programs, but definitely not in engineering. Okay. Uh, for uh, students um, in uh, engineering program, uh, for example, in master program of engineering, um, do they have to do uh, internship or do mm -hmm. they have to find a lab to do some that experiment support or something like internship kind of job during their study? Not right now, uh, since it's a, a scientific oriented, research oriented programs, uh, you don't, we don't require an internship in industry, for example, mm -hmm. but you're always uh, free to look for an internship. And we, if we have an application that the student want to um, do an internship, we always support um, this application. We are working closely together with companies. So we have contacts um, in companies uh, um, all around us in Freiburg, uh, but also statewide, like the company of Bosch or uh, Daimler, Mercedes Benz, for example, uh, also medical companies, um, uh, medical engineering companies. So there's always a possibility to do an internship and there's always a demand for from the industry to have uh, good students in their fields and the, also language should not be a problem. A lot of uh, the communication is done in English language. The only thing you have to keep in mind if you are finishing your, like, let's say, master program at the university and you're looking for a job in Germany, you should acquire um, good amount of skills in German language. Uh, either you, there's always uh, the, the companies told me um, we um, like to hire international students, but they should uh, know to talk in German on a specific level, not a bright, the highest level, but they should be able to communicate. That's what you should keep in mind. And you um, normally you uh, do your master's thesis, which is in the last uh, semester, in the last term, 
uh, in one of the labs um, of uh, the research groups of the faculty, but there's always a possibility also to do an external master thesis in collaboration of one of the professors and in like an industry company um, or uh, research organization, research uh, institute outside the universities. But you have to agree before, not only do the master thesis outside the university and then at the end come back and try to get it accepted, but uh, you should do the agreement before, but it's always possible. All about the application channels, uh, show students directly apply for their interest program on, on a website or can I do this either by UniAssist? Uh, no, our university does not work together with UniAssist. You have to apply directly at the program or at the university level. As I said before, now we have online uh, application. There's a, uh, where you can upload all your documents and then later on you have to send some uh, written materials. But first of all, there's always the online application uh, possibility at the university. Let's close it with the last one. Uh, what would you suggest to the applicant who are interested to apply for uh, University of Bradford? Uh, what would the first preparation, the most important pre preparation they should focus on? Okay, so first of all, visit the website and see, collect as much information as possible from the information present on the website. And then there's, for every single program, there are a uh, person uh, in charge um, or so it's an email address which you can contact. So if you have further questions, then just feel free to write an email to one of the coordinators of these specific programs. And then they will uh, guide you through the pro process or you find enough information on how to proceed uh, with your own applications. And, uh, but there are always a person in persons in charge who assist you. And we also have the contact information on the screen here. Uh, yes. Either it's for uh, international student service and a student, uh, uh, it's more specific in the study program. Uh, so, like uh, all of you, if you have any questions afterwards, you can still reach the school and then probably uh, you can receive more information uh, based on your background, your interest, uh, and your future goals. Thank you, Rena, for coming out tonight or today yeah. at your site. Uh, thank you for bringing us to the presentation here. Yeah, thank you very much for how today I can uh, present the University of Freiburg uh, to you. And uh, thank you for participating. Thank you. Bye bye. See you next time. See you next time. Maybe in present. <laughs> yes, next year. Okay. Bye bye. <laughs>